If you'll please be seated. Well, if you're visiting today or uh, you're um, here today, you might note that things have changed a bit since the last time you got here. It's Lent, and we're in purple. We marched around the congregation interceding and praying over you uh, for so many different things uh, and praying for the world for so many different things. There's, I don't think anything is missed in those prayers. I was talking to a member of the choir just a minute ago and uh, reminded me that it was very much like when you went through your um, bar mitzvah and um, where the Torah is taken around the congregation uh, as the word of God surrounds the congregation as chanting is going on to show and display the protection of the word of God. And this is the protection of prayer over the people and over our community as um, we enter uh, this Lenten season. So today what I'm going to do is preach from uh, the Gospel of Mark, and if you'd open your bulletin, and actually you can go ahead and put it up on the board if you would like. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, take some time uh, and speak about what I'm going to call spirit interactions. And so be in the Gospel of Mark, uh, we will be in uh, the first chapter, uh, beginning at the uh, ninth verse and going through the thirteenth verse. But let me be quite honest, I'm primarily going to spend time in the 12th verse and the 13th verse as we, as we move through this. So what I want to do is uh, kind of catch us up to speed. We're in the very beginning of the Gospel of Mark. Uh, you can see we're in the first chapter. Uh, and quite honestly, Mark does not mince words. He goes straight at it, and he clearly will tell us everything that's going on in Jesus' life uh, and some implications for us. But what he'll do, quite honestly, is just say it very quickly. And it's important for us to dive into the word so that we can um, extrapolate some of the stuff out that, quite honestly, Mark is trying to tell us. And so we're going to see in the um, ninth uh, verse, he's going to talk about the fact that Jesus of Nazareth was going to be baptized in the River Jordan. I preached about that a couple of weeks ago. And he came up out of the water, and immediately the heavens opened up, and uh, it, the Spirit descended on him like a dove. So what we want to get an idea here is we've got Jesus, and now we have the Spirit uh, that is going on. And what we see uh, in this, the Spirit descends him on like a dove uh, to kind of initiate or inaugurate his ministry. Um, so we see that uh, this Spirit is very, very present. Please do not forget that throughout this sermon and all of your days. For when you were baptized, the very same Spirit came upon you. The very same Spirit came upon you with all power and with all truth and with all might. So please, please hold on to that. The next thing that happens is we get a voice uh, that came from heaven uh, indicating it's from God the Father that says, this is my beloved in whom I am well pleased. And so we are seeing that we have God the Father speaking to the Son and speaking to everyone out there, including us today, that Jesus is the one who God the Father is well pleased. He has sent him into the earth. So any of you that just caught what I just said, we had the triune God operating automatically, didn't we? Jesus is there, the Holy Spirit is there, and God the Father is there. Do you see this? They're all involved in this moment, and they're all participating as one in this moment here at the baptism. So the Trinity is right there, right in the very beginning of the Gospel of Mark. It's just right smack dab there. And God the Father says, this is my beloved, this is my son, this is the one who I am well pleased. Please, he's not a prophet, he is simply God Almighty that has come into the world. Just simply. And then we go on. And it says, and immediately the Spirit, the Spirit of God, 
drove him out into the wilderness. So the Spirit of God is directing him into the wilderness, pushing him into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for 40 doggone days, being tempted by who? Tempted, please do not forget that word, by Satan. And so there's going to be wild beasts that are there, and he is going to uh, be ministered to uh, by the angels. So we've got a lot going on. The wild beasts that are there, are they're dangerous. But Jesus has authority over them. And what we're going to see is Jesus is going to have authority over the devil through this passage. Now, in order to kind of get a whole idea of what's going on in this passage, we need to go on over uh, to Mark. We need to go backwards to Mark. And we be, need to be in Mark chapter 4. And Mark in chapter 4 is going to speak a little bit more about how Jesus is tempted. But I'm going to leave it at this right now. How are you personally tempted by the evil one? You might be like the Gospel of Mark and not have to say a whole lot, but the reality is you are, and the reality is I am. For if Jesus is gonna be tempted, then you better believe it. We're going to have those wonderful opportunities of temptation. And the question will be, well, what will we do with the temptation? Will we fall into temptation? Or will we be able to stand against temptation like Jesus did? Now, how many of you that have, have fallen into temptation and won the battle for a minute were really excited? Come on now, work with me here. <laughs> when you were tempted and all of a sudden you won the battle and you go, did that battle come back? Evil is a persistent little booger. And you better know it. And how many of you that have fallen into temptation and failed were miserable? It is because Christ did not fail. It is because Christ did not fail in the wilderness that he is the perfect offering for your sins and my sins and our failures. For he is the pure and spotless lamb of God that goes to the cross and takes away, vanishes our sin, our transgressions, that we all know so well. Jesus is teaching us in this passage that we need to be aware of our temptations. And we need to be aware that the Spirit will be there in the middle of our temptations to guard us. The question is, will we listen? Will we listen in the middle of our temptations or will we honor, wander aimlessly into them and get caught in the midst of it? And a scandal will brew, won't it? It may not brew throughout the entire world, but it'll certainly brew in your heart and my heart. And for many, it'll brew throughout the world. So what we're going to do today is I want to give you an analogy for a second. I want to give you the analogy of a mouse trap. Anybody ever had to catch mice in your house? Yeah, you probably use the same trap that they've used like forever. You know that wooden piece there that has the uh, great big um, uh, spring on it and you 
pull it back and then you set it down and you put the bait on the end of the stick and you just hope you're going to catch that rascal. How many of you have been caught yourself in the midst of that trap when the temptation of the cheese or whatever it was was at the end of the bar? Do you know what that bar is called? Anybody? It is called the scandalon in Greek. Should that kind of trigger something for you? That if that bar is out there and you and I are enticed by the treat or the temptation, when we grab the temptation, what happens when we remove it from the scandal on? <laughs> Boom, we failed. Unless you're a really good mouse or a liar, or a cheat, or a crook, or someone who just lives in the midst of their own sin. So what we're going to do is we're going to go quickly, if we will, to um, Mark, and we're going to look at Mark for a couple of minutes, and we're going to see that Jesus was tempted in three different ways while he was in Mark. You might want to write a couple things down because I'm going to go very quickly, and this is um, a lead into a sermon series that might happen later on, but you might want to kind of get a few words down that might be helpful to you. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at these temptations. We're going to see that Jesus is first tempted physically by the devil. He's going to be tempted physically. That's what you need to write down, physically. And as he's tempted physically, he's being tempted by what? Bread. And he says, the evil one says, turn these, these rocks into bread. Because you're hungry out here in the middle of the desert. There's not a whole lot to eat. Go ahead and feed yourself. Sensate yourself. Take care of yourself. In essence, the evil one says, do what you think feels right. So how many of you have gone through a physical temptation? And in that physical temptation, you were enticed to do what feels right. And when you did what felt right because you knew it was wrong, the scandal ensued. Correct? The second trap that Jesus is placed in is an emotional trap. And the emotional trap is built around security. How many of you have ever felt insecure and then fought back? Never? Anybody? Come on now, wait a minute. I know, I know I'm talking to somebody out there. So in that emotional track, you, you feel insecure, and all of a sudden, you want to just kind of tighten it up and get everything going, and, and, and you just kind of get things going, and as you get going, you question God's love because you want to fix your emotions. Because your emotions are just in turmoil. This happens to Jesus as he is uh, tempted uh, by the evil one to jump. Make sure those angels catch you now. Make sure those angels catch you now. And he says, no, 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 I don't need to jump. I am quite honestly the most emotionally secure human being that has ever lived. And I don't need to test that. And by the way, Little pointy-eared man, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. We 
But you've been emotionally challenged at times. I've been emotionally challenged. And my security, my insecurity begins to well up. And as my insecurity begins to well up, probably like your insecurity wells up, all of a sudden I'm going to question, God, do you really, really love me? Are you really, really there? The third thing that happens that Jesus is tempted with is he is to bow down to Satan. And Satan says, I'll give you everything. I'll give you everything. And so the third test is a psychological test. It's about control. How many of you ever felt like you are out of control or you don't have control of things that are going on around you? How many of you are control freaks like me? Come on. And as that goes on, you know that you're trying to exercise control over things that you don't have control over. How's it working for you? It doesn't work for me very well. And Jesus quite honestly says to the evil one, sorry brother, I am the most psychologically in control person that has ever lived and you shall not have dominion over me. For I shall worship the Lord God and serve only Him. Because He's the one who has control. So in this physical sense of temptation, we want to do what feels right to us. In emotional temptation, we want security and we want to question God's love. In psychological uh, uh, temptation, what's happened is we want to gain control because we want to take over God's throne. By the way, those of you that are control freaks like me, because I can preach a sermon all day long, When I want to take over God's throne, who usually gets kicked off of it quick? Moi. And I'm not just talking me. Remember, this sermon is not about me. But when you want to take over control, who gets kicked off quick? You do. As you and I are placed in these positions of enormous temptation that are out there around us, we know that the mousetrap of life wants to snap us. But you and I, dear friends, have authority. You and I have the authority that Jesus has. Jesus comes to confront evil, not compromise. You and I, dear friends, are called to confront evil, not compromise, but defeat it. Now, I'm going to what we got to go to here is that the Spirit is constantly with Jesus in the middle of the desert, in the wilderness. And that same Spirit is with you in the middle of your wilderness. Will you trust that the Spirit is speaking to you in the midst of your temptation and my temptation? Whether it is in fact, psychological or emotional or physical? Will we trust that the Spirit is speaking to us? We pray all the time, lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. And this testing that's going on within us, this, stuff, this temptation that's occurring with us, do you ever, when you want to fight back in any of these three areas, do you ever kind of feel it? When, it, when, that, when that temptation is out there? Do, do you ever feel it? Where do you feel it? I feel it right here. My heart and my soul begins to flutter. Anybody else? 
I think that's because the Holy Spirit is speaking to all of us constantly. I know people that get really sweaty, sweaty hands when this is going on. But for me, it hits me right here. Where does it hit you when, it, when that temptation is out there? Will you pay attention to the Spirit who's speaking to you? For when the Spirit is speaking to you in the midst of temptation, pay attention to it. Ask yourself, is this a physical challenge that's going against my manhood or my womanhood? Is this, in fact, an emotional thing that's going on within me? Where am I insecure? What's happening within me? The Spirit is speaking to you and I to tell us for a moment, pause. Pay close attention. Be on guard for the devil prowls near. And as we do so, we can begin to define which it is. And the Spirit will protect you, but your flesh won't. Because your flesh, dear friends in Christ, wants to fight back in the physical and emotional and psychological realm. It wants to fight back so hard. And you know it. And you know it. Jesus gives us that same spirit that was on him in the middle of the wilderness to check ourselves and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus, I, I, need, I need you. I need your power and your might right now because I don't want to compromise this situation and fall into temptation. I want to stand strong in you. I want to stand strong in you. And Jesus stood strong in himself and defeated evil. And he did it, dear friends, in Christ because the Spirit was with him and he knew the Word of God and he fought back the devil with the Word of God at every turn. The phrases that are given in Matthew are given not just so we can read them and feel good about them. The phrases are there for fighting against evil because it's present. So when that hungry thing comes up and you are just hungry for whatever it is, I'm not talking just sensate physical hunger. There's all kinds of hungers that go on within us. Our role is to say man is not to live by bread alone, but every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Show me, Lord God, your word because this hunger that's going on within me, I do not want to fall into. That insecurity that kicks in and we want to jump and the devil tells us to jump to prove ourselves. Jesus says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And we have the opportunity to say to the evil one, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test because he lives within me. He lives within me. So do not test me. Get behind me. And we're feeling that sense of control, that sense of our psychological weakness that goes on. We tend to want to bow down to something that's more important and we know that it's a false God. We know it's a false reality. We know it's something that has no power. Jesus says to us, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Can we say that to the evil one? I shall worship the Lord God and only serve him. These are three pieces of scripture 
that are given to you and I to fight and defeat that which assaults the soul. For our souls are in peril. That's why they speak when evil is persistent. Dear friends in Christ, beware for the devil prowls near. The roaring, roaring lion. But you have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. And you have the word of God in order to stand strong on. So do not fall. To those assaults that are out there. All those temptations that are out there. Where they lead us to a place of danger. 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 And it'll break you. And you know it. You are God's beloved. And he has given you all power to deal with those assaults that are around us. Amen.